I'm Miriam Mia Lopez. I'm from Jerome, Idaho, and I'm an undergraduate student here at Idaho State University in Pocatello, Idaho. I am majoring in biology with a biomedical concentration. I am a first year fellow in the Society for the Development of Biology Choose Development Undergraduate Research Training Program, and I'm a TRIO McNair Scholar. I am working in Dr. Heather Ray's Developmental Biology Lab at Idaho State University. In the lab, we use Xenopus labius, also known as the African cloud frog embryos, to study how mutations can lead to structural birth defects. Let me show you the lab I will be working in. Currently, we are outside the building where the lab resides. On the left side, it is the Kasiska Division of Health Science building, and on the right is the Gale Life Sciences building, which we will be entering. This is the lobby where students can hang out, study, or eat, along with the main offices. This hallway is where lecture labs are used frequently during the semester for courses. Our lab is on the second floor where the majority of the biological research labs are located. Here on the incoming right is our graduate student's office. This past Halloween, our building had a Halloween door decorating contest and we decorated the graduate student office door and our lab door in which we won the contest and here is a photo of the trophy. There are various areas where students can perform their research and experiments, and here is our microscope room that we use. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Ray, and I'm an assistant professor at Idaho State University. I received my PhD from the University of Colorado and Schutz Medical Campus with Dr. Lee Nicewander, where we used genetic mouse models to understand the process of neural tube development. It was during that time that I first became interested in understanding how genetic mutation could affect the cell behaviors that ultimately lead to structural birth defects, such as neural tube defects. It was then during my postdoc with Dr. Chen Bei Chang that I switched to using Xenopus labus as a model system and focusing more on neural crest development and uh, structural defects that affect the craniofacial bones. So in my lab right now, we study several genes that have been associated with human birth defects, and that's information that came directly from human patient samples. So that includes MASP1, which is associated with 3MC syndrome, um, and HIC1 and HIC2, which are associated with Miller-Deeker and DeGeorge syndromes, respectively. So what we aim to do is to use Xenopus um, embryos to understand how changes in those genes in particular would affect cell behaviors that ultimately lead to the craniofacial phenotypes seen in those syndromes. At the same time, we have the opportunity to learn more about the molecular drivers of neural crest and ultimately uh, craniofacial development. So I am excited to host Miriam as a Choose Development Fellow in my lab and looking forward to seeing where her research um, can increase our understanding of how MASP1 functions during early development. 3MC syndrome, an autosomal recessive disorder, is caused by mutations in the MASP1 gene that encodes mannin binding lectin serine proteinase 1, in short, called MASP1. Patients with 3MC syndrome exhibit craniofacial dysmorphia and cognitive impairment. Previous studies with zebrafish have shown that the loss of gene encoding MASP1 disrupts neural crest cell development but it is unknown if it disrupts cognitive development. Meanwhile, BMP signaling pathway is involved in both neural ectoderm and neural crest development. Previous studies done in the lab suggest that MASP1 may impact BMP signaling. For my project, I am looking into how BMP4, sizzled, and follistatin gene expression may be impacted by MASP1 since BMP4, sizzled, and follistatin proteins are involved in regulating BMP signaling. We will alter the normal MASP1 expression levels through injection with MASP1 messenger RNA or MASP1 antisense morpholino oligonucleotides in either the dorsal or ventral side of the embryos and fixed at gastrulation stages. The embryos will then go through in situ hybridizations to view the expression patterns of BMP4, sizzled, and folostatin. This will help us understand how MASP1 may be impacting BMP signaling at the gene expression level.